So I've had some requests to do a video on how to make trolling spinners for salmon and steelhead. So today I'm going to go over um, all the parts, assembly um, of a trolling spinner, and um, as in my previous videos, I'll put the part numbers um, on the bottom as I go through. Uh, this t this spinner is pretty affordable to produce. It'll cost you about two dollars and fifteen cents in parts. Um, so here's some examples I've made. Um, these are some of the warmer colors, these coppers and reds that I would typically use for fall chinook fishing or even steelhead or coho. And these um, sharper greens and chartreuses and golds are something I tend to favor uh, for spring chinook, at least on the Columbia River systems that I spend most of my time. Okay, so today I'm going to make a, a pink and silver spinner. This would be good for coho or steelhead or even chinook in the fall. And what I'm going to do is I'm going to cover the components, um, basically just starting from the top of the spinner and working down to the bottom. Uh, the spinner is held together by a 6 inch piece of 35 100 diameter stainless steel wire with a loop already on the end. And these are not very expensive, they'll only set you back about a dime each. Um, then comes the probably the most important component of the spinner and that's the blade. For the trolling spinners here in the Northwest for Salmon and Steelhead, I like to use these wide willow leaf blades. These are a size 6. They come in smooth and hammered versions on the parts online. Um, I tend to prefer the smooth, um, just because I like to customize these occasionally. They're not that expensive. They're about 99 cents a piece for the blade. Uh, they come in a lot of different colors and platings, but I prefer these five, and that's copper, uh, a gold plated, a silver lacquer plated, chartreuse, and a fluorescent red. Um, you can customize these in any kind of way you would like. Uh, sometimes I'll put met metallic tape, greens and blues on there, or paint even a green or blue dot on the chartreuse, uh, or paint these fluorescent reds half white. Uh, these are size 6, and I found that's the best size uh, for this uh, size of spinner. You can go up and down in size depending on the size of the spinner that you're making. Uh, the blade is held on by a number 4 clevis, nickel plated. These are fairly inexpensive, um, only about 3 cents a pop. And that's a size 4 clevis. And then below that, I have two of these hollow, small, hollow metal beads. You can barely see them on here. Those will act as the bearing um, for which the clevis will spin on. Below the clevis, I run a series of beads. Um, initially, uh, right below that, you'll want to run, I like to run two of these six millimeter beads. There's a lot of different beads uh, available online. I like these sparkle beads and natural beads. They have either metallic flakes or this is a chartreuse bead with blue flakes. Those uh, are my favorites. Uh, below those couple of, um, below those two beads, those two six millimeter beads, I like to run three larger eight millimeter beads. Um, I tend to use consistent colors, but you can mix it up however you want. That's no big deal. There's basically an endless variety of beads to choose from. And then I run two more 6mm beads underneath this surgical tubing here. So in total you're going to need four 6mm beads and uh, three 8mm beads. The next component, um, which attaches to the bottom on the, that preformed loop on your wire shaft is a size 6 stainless steel split ring. That's good to 80 pounds. That should be good enough for most of the salmon and steelhead that you're going to catch in, uh, in the northwest. And then um, surgical tubing, the latex surgical tubing. Um, oh, I should say that these split rings are fairly inexpensive too. They're only about 8 cents a pop. 
Um, and then surgical tubing, you can get lots of different colors, bright greens, um, fluorescent reds. You're going to need about an inch and a half of that, and you get uh, five feet of this for five bucks, so it's really inexpensive. But you'll only need about an inch and a half. The inch and a half is to cover the two. You basically want enough tubing to cover the two lower beads, the split ring, and a portion of the shaft of the hook. On the terminal end, I run a treble hook, although you can also run a single hook, but I prefer trebles for my spinners. And I use a 6x VMC uh, Gladiator 2 aught hook and coated in permasteel. That means that it's rust proof, so I can use this in the ocean for trolling or in estuaries like Tillamook Bay, Columbia, Willapa Bay, where. Um, you get some saltwater intrusion. Um, if you're only going to be fishing in fresh water, you're fine to go with just the bronze on this. But this is a very robust hook. It's extremely sharp. The barbs pinch down fairly readily um, for those fisheries that have barb restrictions. Um, I really like this hook. It's pretty heavy duty. It's not going to break or bend. And those cost about 65 cents a piece. As far as tools, um, you're going to need a pair of pliers, needle nose pliers preferred, um, and the narrower the needle nose, the better. You'll also need a pair of split ring pliers. Um, a lot of just fishing pliers come with the split ring hook on the end, so you can just use those. That's just for getting the hook um, on the split ring and the split ring on the wire shaft. You're also going to need a pair of scissors for cutting your surgical tubing, so make sure you have something like that or a knife. And then you're going to need a small bowl of water and some um, dish soap. The dish soap uh, and water will be used as a lubricant for sliding on the surgical tubing when we get to that point because that can be uh, very difficult to do without the lubricant. Alright, so that's all the tools and parts that we have, so get everything laid out and then we'll start the assembly. So the first thing we're going to want to do is we're going to want to put this split ring on to the wire shaft. So I'll use my split ring pliers. Now these wire shafts come with a loop already for the where you can attach the split ring. You can buy just a plain wire and make loops yourself, it's totally up to you. Um, I just find this to be a little more convenient. And with this little tool, it's a piece of cake to put the split ring in there. So all I've done is just attached the split ring to the wire shaft. Next, I'm going to go ahead and put the hook on here. It's a pretty hefty hook, so it takes a pretty wide gap to get it onto the. There we go. All right. So what we have now is the wire shaft, the split ring, and the hook. Now the first time I did this, I just tried to put the tubing on there without. Um, anything just sliding it on it was a horrible horrible experience and then I learned pretty quickly that this is a lot easier if you just take a little bit of water and add a little bit of dish soap to it mix that up and then put your surgical tubing in this soapy water solution so the next step you're going to take is take the surgical tubing and slide it over your pliers uh, a needle nose pliers are better. Anything that's got, any pliers that's got sort of a narrow uh, gauge to it be best. Then you want to stretch that surgical tubing apart and then slide the wire shaft up that, um, up the tubing. And what you're going to do, this tubing can really stretch a long way, is you're going to stretch this so much that then you can just bring that over the top of, sometimes the hook gets in the way a little bit, 
bring that over the top of the split ring. See the split ring just slid inside there. And then I'm um, just going to close the pliers and extract them out. Sometimes they stick a little bit, but it comes out. So now you can see I got that split ring inside that tubing. Now the next step is just to sort of put downward pressure and work that tubing down from up above over the shaft of the hook. Um, you may have to re-dip that into the soapy water just to help it slide over that split ring. I mean, there's a lot of tension on that surgical tubing on that split ring. Um, that's a good thing. That's what's going to hold your hook straight. But you just want to keep working it downward. Just start on the top of the split ring and put downward pressure. And the tubing will work its way down to where you want. Just watch your fingers so you don't get... Uh, nailed by the hook there. But so there we go. We got the tubing now over most of the shaft of the hook, and we have space up here where I'm then going to take so up above this split ring underneath the surgical tubing. I want to add a little more body to that um, just to hold it in place. So I'm going to slide a six millimeter bead over the wire shaft, if I can find the holds. Hard to spot there. Now getting the beads inside the surgical tubing is easy. You just put downward pressure and they just slide right in and you can just squeeze them down until it hits the top of that uh, loop. I like to run two of the six millimeter beads in the uh, inside the tubing. Holes are really hard to see when they're filled with soap. Okay. So there we go. We got the hook and split ring and two beads underneath the surgical tubing. Sometimes I'm in this process, I'll bend the wire a little bit. It's okay. It's not that big a deal. You can kind of just work it back into a straight line. Um, it's not a tragedy. This wire is pretty easy to to bend um, in the direction you want it to, and it'll stay. Okay, so after you have that assembled, I like to run three of the larger eight millimeter beads. followed by two, again, of the six millimeter beads. Okay, so we have all the beads. Uh, then the next step is to put our, basically our bearing for the blade to spin on. Um, so I have these those tiny hollow metal beads that you can barely see. Slide those down over. I like to use two of them. And they fit just perfectly over this wire. One. the two metal beads, two six millimeter beads, three eight millimeter beads, two six millimeter beads under the tubing, our split ring, and then that's attached to the hook, and that's all of that is bound together by the surgical tubing. Next you'll need to take your wide willow leaf blade or cascade blade and your number four clevis and run that through the hole in the blade. Make sure the blade is facing outward, and then you'll slide that assembly onto the wire shaft, and there's two holes on the clevis that allow it to spin. So we're getting pretty close here to being done. Um, 
We've got our silver blade, wide willow leaf blade, a number four clevis, two hollow metal beads, and then our plastic bead assembly leading down. So the last bit is just to form the wire loop. Um, that will be the terminal where you attach, uh, attach it to the line. So I usually go up about a quarter inch above the blade um, and the clevis pull all the way down with some needle nose pliers. Pinch it really tight and then I'm going to bend this wire blade back uh, over the top to create a loop. And with this six inches there's a lot of play. So I bent it back over like so. And I'm going to continue to wrap it around the nose of the, the pliers. So by doing that I get this sort of characteristic loop. And then I grab that loop and then I make try and make at least three very tight wraps around working downward in a spiral um, from the pliers along the wire shaft here. Just because salmon steel are so strong um, you don't want them to be able to undo that loop. I put a lot of force on it. Just so I get a nice tight wrap. There's machines that you can buy that do this for you, but I guess I'm just old fashioned. Alright, so then I just have this tag in I need to cut off. So I'm not tear, tearing up the fish's mouth. Put that away. And got a completed spinner. So again, it's just the wire loop, wide willow leaf blade, number four clevis, two hollow metal beads, two plastic beads, six millimeter, eight followed by three eight millimeter beads, two six millimeter beads underneath the plastic tubing, the split ring which attaches the hook to the wire shaft. And there you go. You got your trolling spinner for salmon for two bucks. It'll kill lots of fish, um, and it's very effective and affordable, easy to make. Um, you don't have to go and spend five, seven, ten dollars on these things at the store. You can make them for yourself for two bucks. So feel free to uh, post any questions down below. I'll do my best to answer them. And uh, yeah, thanks for watching.